Hello. Hi and um, good morning. And this is Facebook is giving me some technical error over here. I'm not sure what is the reason. So I'm sorry if it is not available on Facebook. Um, and um, uh, yeah, today's session is going to be focusing on uh, focusing on my experience from the uh, six months which I have spent in the Mara. So uh, I still have to go and check a lot of images, especially with whatever I have shot with my C7 or C6. Uh, so and the issue over there is you cannot directly review or preview the images. I use preview software for checking the images. So that's where I have a bit of lag over here um, to cross check the images. Some some of you guys have already suggested the software for it, but unfortunately, I am still struggling with that. Um, so images from uh, last six, six months, which is November till uh, till May first, November twenty nineteen, no twenty twenty two, May twenty twenty one is the collection which I'm going to share now. So hello, Ellie, and. Um, Hello, everyone. I am sorry that uh, there is some trouble with um, Facebook, but uh, I have absolutely no idea why Facebook is giving me this issue as of now. Uh, but let's see uh, if there is any possibility to do something or later on. So uh, that's one thing. Uh, what else is there? Now let's get into the images so that we can talk about what we are intent to. Now, uh, this one, I mean, I, this is a lilac breasted roller. And um, I spotted this during one of our workshop in Masemara and this fellow get hold of this grasshopper, which was slightly bigger than the usual catches. And it flew from one place to another with this one. So it was again, uh, uh, it, it was again interesting as well as um, uh, quite uh, quite a struggle to see it because one side, yes, it is nature, it is its life, and if you are not going, if they are not going to kill, they will not be able to survive. That is for sure. And um, at the same time, if uh, at the same time, it is going to be, I'm sorry for the echo, uh, at the same time, the another issue was getting it, uh, it was kind of jumping in between for one place to one another place, it flew from one place to another place, so we, we kind of kept our distance to get it proper. Uh, I was focusing on this particular day more on the um, video part of it, but um, got some images in between. So the confusion always is between sh shuffling between video and audio is always a problem, uh, at least for me. Uh, so uh, that's one thing which you need to be thinking about. I was thinking about focusing on this particular uh, period of time to focus more on the webs uh, on the video side, but every time I I try to focus on the video after a while I kind of get into a feel that I should think about uh, the images so that's one thing which you can or you need to kind of be focused and uh, have a clear idea of what you are actually looking for that way things can be slightly easy for you you will always be confused if you are a, if you start with photography and then uh, later on uh get into uh videos then this can slightly be confusing quite often for a lot of people same with me i still need to you know figure out a way to get out of this uh double mind now going forward uh for the next one now this is a chameleon's tail so whenever whichever subject it is you need to give a good opportunity for it so if you are going to focus on any subject in that matter, uh, you will be able to create some interesting shots. 
Uh, I've seen some images of chameleons, uh, and again, tail, just the eyes, and uh, just the just their hands or legs, and the way they move. Everything is really dramatic. So, the idea over here was once again to see how can we create something interesting. I've seen two or three different shades of this fellow uh, during. Um, I mean, not one particular character uh, we have spotted uh, two or three chameleons in six months time in fact mainly the number is low only because we haven't looked for it if you're going to look for chameleons in uh, mara you will definitely get a lot of opportunities unfortunately most of the time we were after the bigger animals this was again with the uh, 105 uh, and i can uh, uh, macro lens. After I got this, I wanted to try and get a bit more hand in it. So macro is still a kind of mystery for me. I am still try, trying to understand the concept behind the depth of field when it comes to macro and uh, how the way it works. Maybe because I'm not using it as often I, as I wish or I want it, that could be the reason. So another lesson is the more you are using your equipment, you will get a better understanding or a better hand in that. So that's very, very important. And so use your camera as much as possible so that uh, you will be more comfortable in the way the camera see it as well as how you see it. Uh, there is no other shortcut other than practicing. Once again, at the same fellow, it was a rainy day. And the same fellow, he was standing on one particular branch and trying to get on top of the other one. Uh, I don't know what, what he have seen or what he was trying. It, there was a, some kind of flower in this particular one. Uh, maybe he was seeing some bugs or something. I'm not sure what it is, but it was an interesting uh, scene. Now, moving forward. So once again, the more time you are spending spending along with one subject there is great possibility you will end up in getting more interesting frames so it's not like you see something and you take a couple of shots you jump into another subject spend more time with one particular subject you will always be able to get into more now the next one as this one, I've shared this image so far many times, but then it was an interesting scene as well. Uh, this is with, um, um, you know, C7 and uh, 7200 mm at uh, 70. And uh, I was using uh, F18. And this for in this particular series, I got only three or four shots uh, where the sun was coming through or sun was appearing right below the neck. And it was really an interesting uh, morning. In fact, I missed few shots of this elephant too after this particular scene. When we got this one, uh, after a few seconds, he moved. And no matter how hard I tried to place me after he moved, I couldn't get the same kind of effect with the sun. Uh, so certain moments happens only for a while. So you just need to be sure that you are taking it in the right way. So that's one thing. And um, so this was uh, with the C7 Mark 1 and 7200 mm at 70. And uh, it was early morning. So I have, was using Kelvin to the higher side, maybe around uh, 8300 underexposed it. And EF was EF18. I don't remember the shutter speed. And I used to, to the lowest, which is like L1, not even to the 100 or 64. You, you, you kind of uh, reduce it to the least when it comes to uh, uh, when the sun is above. And um, if you think you can play with something, go to the least uh, possible um, ISO performance uh, to avoid noise issues. So in here, this was the base ISO of the camera, then um, F18 and underexposing was the key over here. Now going further to the next image, uh, this is Luluka with her cub, uh, along, with, uh, along with her cub. And the greatest part of it was, it was she was looking literally in, on my into my face and then you can see it, it. It's again a high ISO image, maybe 
3000 plus was the ISO. It was day, but then it was a very cloudy day. Now, the reason for getting the ISO to the higher side, as you can see the white dots, it's all um, it's all because of the rain. And uh, so it was quite on the cloudy side, but the mother as well as the cub was really on an active mode. So this is the leopard known as Luluka along with her cub. She made a kill uh, and then uh, she put it on a tree, I guess. I remember, I, I think it was on a tree or in a bush. Uh, she put it on a tree, I guess. And then uh, she moved uh, to get this cub. And there was some amazingly inter interesting uh, moments with the interaction between them. And this was on their way back to the kill. She was leading the cub to the kill and... Um, my idea was to get something when the cub was jumping, but what I got is when the mother was jumping and she was literally looking at me. In situations like this, what you need to do is um, you definitely need to keep a higher, a higher ISO in order to get the action proper. So in the, that was the reason for me to keep um, uh, this... Um, ISO on the higher side over here, especially around 3000 plus, I was a bit worried because I was using a C7 Mark 1, not even Mark 2. And what I find, honestly, uh, about if you're talking about action sequence, I will definitely prefer D5 or D6 over C7 because I feel there is slight lag when it comes to action sequence so when i took this when i was taking this particular picture i saw it jumping i saw it looking but i was so scared to check the preview because i was not sure whether i get i'll, I'll get it or it's in the lag it is gone or not because all these things happen only for the fraction of a second but thankfully yeah i managed to freeze it and uh, this was one of the best shots from that particular series the moment every image is, uh, you know, the moment you are using slightly on the higher side cameras, the FPS is definitely on the higher end. And there is good possibility you will get a series of images. Uh, in this case, so I'm, uh, I'm not going to share all the images. I'm just trying to share the images which we captured or which I have edited in, in, in today's session. So uh, the reason you are seeing noise is because of the higher side. I haven't used the a, a denoise AI in this picture. If I'm going to use it, definitely I can get rid of the uh, ISO issue. But in general, keep your ISO slightly on the higher side if you think the light is low and if there is action and if you would like to freeze it. If you're thinking about getting something on uh, uh, on motion or with little bit of motion blur as an experiment then that is different but if it is not then this is one thing which you need to think about uh the next one is going to be uh this yeah it's again another moment with uh, luluka and her cup so here in the previous one, if we were talking about shutter speed in this particular and action in this particular case, I was thinking about the frame. In fact, I had this frame in my head for such a long time, inspired by many other photographers from across the world. I've seen some amazing moments like this. You know, you see the a part of the mother's body in the friend and only the eyes coming from the backside of the body and the beautiful green bouquet. Everything was uh, came together in certain point and which makes it look even more interesting. So this was one of such days. Uh, this is again Lulu and her cub. It was an early morning and I was using, uh, yeah, once again, it was um, a 400 mm 2.8 along with uh, C7 Mark one. So uh, things like this, yes, you really need to... Uh, the moment you think about if you are investing few minutes or some time uh, before the shoot, the day before the shoot on the things which you can, if there is a possibility to uh, think about it or imagine the frames about it, I think there is a great possibility you will tend to see the same in the field too. At least I'm talking about my experience. 
uh, there are people who do think I'm a bit crazy when it comes to dreaming. Yes, of course, I do I agree. I live half of my time in my dreams. And I kind of see a lot of things which I dream in my frames too. So I strongly believe and suggest do dream. Do dream your frames. <laughs> so this is one of such moments where I saw a moment from my frame of my dreams getting into my frames and uh, got it. Um, again, uh, C7 along with a 2.8 and this was early morning and I was using 2.8 to get that bokeh feel all around. The focus was on the eyes. In normal scenario, if I'm shooting a leopard, I usually keep the focus on the whiskers or the base of the whiskers to get it, get them sharp. But in this particular case, the focus was on the eyes and uh, it was really, uh, it, it was a deep look, what should I say? It was really an amazing, amazing feel when she was really looking into the eyes. So another beautiful memory. When you see the frame, think about different possibilities for framing. Go horizontal, vertical, slightly underexpose it, slightly overexpose it. So all possibilities within the given time you should think about. Going further, uh, yeah, one shot which I can say, one of my great moments and in one way I can say that it was slight disappointment too. As you can see, it was a leap. I was using a, a 400 mm 2.8 uh, along with a D5. It was an early morning. Uh, there were a lot of guards too. I mean, the uh, rangers as well around all the people because of the moment you see the five cheetahs, Lulu or any other leopard with the cub, there will almost all the vehicle will be in that area to control any kind of uh, overcrowding. Usually there will be a lot of rangers too. So we were kind of, you can say, accompanied by the rangers to make sure that everyone is keeping their distance. Uh, so this was an amazing, amazing moment. Unfortunately, I ended up in cut in the frame uh, during the action. She just, without any expectation, she may, usually it gives a little bit more time. So she was like kind of stopping every now and then and looking left and right and moving further. In this particular case, as the same thing happened, we were slightly on the closer side. So as you can see, it is, um, this is full frame as it is. So uh, I kind of messed with the framing. Even if I was doing anything, I don't think I would, I would have got the leg or if, if at all the leg, the tail would have been still cut. So that was one saddest part, but then it was an amazing experience. You could see the dew drops and uh, everything in this uh, frame if you are checking around and including some bugs, fly, flies flying on top. So these dots, what you are seeing are the flies, uh, which you can spot almost on any species in, in the wild. So once again, early morning, uh, once again, low light condition. So I was keeping the ISO slightly on the higher side to get the action. We knew something is going to happen and this is what happened. I feel bad about the a chopped tail as well as the leg, but it's still one of my interesting moment. The next one is about and the next one is about emotion. So it was a rainy day, and uh, this uh, I forgot the name of her, but she got two cubs, slightly older ones. I mean, not very very young, but not too old. I mean, sub adult kind of maybe four months, four and a half months old cubs. And it was raining, so uh, the idea was to get the raindrops and um, add streaks. So I kept the uh, shutter speed, put everything on manual. Whenever you're doing some kind of experiment, especially with slow shutter, my suggestion will be go on completely manual, including the focus. Uh, if the light is good and um, if you are comfortable in... Um, if you're comfortable in manual focus, switch to manual focus. If not, then um, keep it on autofocus. In normal scenario, I do keep uh, on autofocus. The rest of the things I keep it on uh, in case uh, if I'm doing experiments, um, then I go completely on manual. So in this case, yes, my focus 
plus uh, all the settings were in manual and um, 160 was the uh, shutter speed to get the get the feel of the raindrops as lines so that's one thing which you can think about 160 definitely gives you uh, uh, in a proper line feel to the uh, to the raindrops and again the strength of the rain if, the, if it is a strong rain and then your focusing can be slightly tricky and the way you position the light you know every direction you will not be able to see the raindrops so you need to have some uh, if you have darker background and you have light from the opposite side behind the subject that will help you to see the raindrops properly so that's another thing which you can think about plus um, go hundred and go at 160 that definitely helps you to get the uh, raindrops as lines too and now uh, another thing with um, when it comes to um, this is uh, yeah uh, look for the emotions emotions is the story behind the pictures so you always need to think about the emotions so then what else is there uh, yeah, I here I was keeping the Kelvin value around 6,300. It was evening, it was cloudy, and it was beautiful. So I see a lot of hello. So hello to all of you. Uh, sorry, there is a mess up with uh, Facebook. I'm not sure what is the reason. So that's the reason Facebook as live is not happening. Sorry for that. Uh, we'll definitely share the video later in Facebook too. Uh, now, going further. Uh, this is this was another interesting story behind it. It was uh, we spotted this fellow. Uh, there were two more uh, lions in, along when we spotted with them. Spotted them together. These are the five brothers from the Black Rock tribe, and uh, we saw them shaking their head. I still haven't shared those images or videos, uh, but yeah, it was nice. It was interesting, and then. Uh, he started to move around and he saw this um, some den. I'm not sure what was inside this particular one, but then he spent almost uh, two hours or two and a half hours digging this, digging this place. And uh, I'm not sure what he found from there, uh, but then it was, it was really a crazy thing. Uh, so he dig it, dig it, and uh, after that, it was a small hole. He managed to make it as big as possible for him within the given time. And then he moved away from there. He couldn't manage to find whatever was inside. We don't know. We have no clue what was inside. But some videos and uh, some images, uh, it was an interesting evening. So whenever you have a possibility to create some videos along with the images, do that. I'm not an expert when it comes to filmmaking. Uh, but then I'm trying to get into that line for sure. Still getting the grip on um, focusing on the action sequence. And the biggest struggle for me as, as, as of now when it comes to videography, uh, what I feel is um, a proper uh, head, video head, which can be placed on top of the um, windows. Uh, otherwise, I'm using the normal heads, uh, which I'm using for photography. That is really not helping me much because the way we want to pan or move the uh, body, that's always always uh, quite a tricky thing. You will feel that jerk in the you know, video. I'm not, again, once again, editing. Video editing is one another key thing. I'm still trying to get the basics of Adobe Premiere. But it's interesting. Anything new and anything challenging can always give you a run. So that's what is uh, right now what I'm doing. But again, uh, if you're talking about the experience, yes, this was an interesting moment. So this fellow does uh, definitely did give us the time to start with uh, 400 mm, then 7200 mm, then wide angle videos, vertical, horizontal, and uh, underexposed, overexposed, you name it, everything we tried it on that day because he gave us his sweet time. 
so wait for it unfortunately though it didn't end up in a kill or a hunt it still gave us some amazing documentary side of uh, the behavior part so it was really interesting and now moving further uh yeah another late evening so most of the scenes these are the main reasons we always suggest go for the cam when it comes to the camera go for go for a camera which gives um a good iso performance that's one thing which is very very important um so you need to think about uh, that in this case we were uh, we were look we were actually um this is this which pride was this uh, yeah this this was the pride of uh, the yeah when i think about one name and if i missed it then getting it is quite difficult um look out pride yes i i'm not sure whether this cub is still alive because there were four cubs in four or five cubs in this particular pride unfortunately um most of them got killed in some kind of uh, fights territorial fights i guess and this is the um uh, uh, more, this is the pride of morani and uh, scarface and again we missed scarface last this year so it was a, i'm sure this is Scar alliance like scarface and uh, their pride is like you know that's the um, most uh, photograph of the people's dream to see scarface even in his very very last time it it was a dream for almost everybody to see a bit of a glimpse of him so this is from his pride most likely his son uh, but yeah it was an amazing moment uh, he was on top of this particular mount it was late evening the light was he was on the facing the right direction facing the sun so still give us some great time so when it comes to cubs of course you do need to give a good time for them uh, to make sure that uh, you know everything is good and um, uh, make sure that you're setting your you're checking your settings and um, if the con eye contact as well as any time you get an eye contact into your picture that can again add more value to the image um what else is there yeah spend more time that will definitely help i'm uh, moving further um uh, yeah the, there were few occasions where i managed to get some shots of snakes this time i haven't edited most of it so this is a rock python he made a kill and he was blocking our way so uh, because of because he had uh, some kill and something which was big he was not able to move and um he was staying there for a while <coughs> and what we have done is we kind of uh, jumped to the back side of the vehicle kept the door open uh, and then I took this um, uh, low angle shot uh, so whenever there is an opportunity with snakes you really really need to be extremely careful rock pythons are not you know venomous but then they can definitely give you a hard time if you try to get close or try to act smart so make sure you are keeping your safe distance and um, uh, make sure you're doing the right thing nothing unethical so this was with an open door in the vehicle and uh, the positioning of the uh, uh, this guy uh, the rock python was quite in an, um, it was on the road you can see and it was blocking our way then we took the off road side and uh, moved the head because of he was because he was blocking our way so going the lower the possible without harming or without making any dangerous to you or uh, to the subject always help you to get some lovely images um, so 400 mm 2.8 along with uh, nike d5 was the equipment i have used over here it was an interesting scenario the other snakes what i remember seeing this time was a green green uh, viper I mean, extremely beautiful uh, green viper uh, in the rain uh, from a top angle shot yes I, I do have some 
couple of images of this green viper it was an amazingly beautiful um, um, uh, uh, snake which i have seen then spitting cobra with which had a something small in its uh, head again a ground level of a spitting cobra that was the three snake shots which i got we do saw black mamba once but no photos it was quite fast so couldn't manage to get a picture i'm scared of snakes um, uh, to be honest yeah i like to see them from a distance but if you ask me to go near to them or touch them no i'm the last i will be the last person if it is a venomous one to go closer to it but if it is non venomous if somebody is handling it i may but i will be still scared of snakes they are extremely beautiful absolutely no comment about that but um it do give me a bit of um, a fear to be honest um so i do see a lot of hearts from sinto anto so thank you so much dear for that <laughs> um and that then going forward for the next one uh, yeah again with uh, uh, luluka and her cub on a beautiful morning uh, when whenever when again in this particular series we got more than i mean i got more than uh, 10 15 images one few seconds you know they were playing there was a small ditch uh, there was no light in the ditch then the mother got on top of this particular uh, place and we were on the other side of the uh, this particular ditch and uh, then when she got on top of the cub was slightly away and then the cub approached to her and jumped on top of the mother and then jumped outside so it was really an interesting scenario maybe around 20 to 30 images but thankfully thankfully i mean uh, sometimes i do mess up with my frames i, I do cut some tails or head like the previous image which i have shared on the jumping sequence but in this case in every shot every part of the body was visible which was a big relief plus the action so there were a couple of things in this particular frame the rim light the outer outline the, the light was um, back side of the subject so was focus was on to getting the rim out of it um then the second thing was um, the color so the kelvin was slightly on the higher side uh, to get that uh, golden feel to the picture um iso was slightly on the higher side once again to get the action framing thankfully we were in a good distance so i didn't uh, chop up the tails of the subject so um uh, that is another thing so it was it was really really an interesting moment so things when you are when you are focusing on cubs with mother and their interaction there is always a possibility for some good jump some good run so keep your distance with them so that they feel more comfortable in your presence and uh, if you're thinking about uh, action sequence and if there is a lack of light always try to push your iso and if you're worried about the uh, noise issues then the, there is a software called the noise ai it's not a complicated one it's a very simple one uh, that can really really help you to get your um get your uh, iso issues sorted so that is another thing right? to get the action definitely you need to keep the iso i mean you need to keep an uh, eye on the shutter speed and in case if you are uh, lacking uh, light you can always increase the aperture so that's fine um thank you so much uh, sinto uh once again uh ah, so this was from the the very first picture which i have shared of the um, uh, uh lilac breasted roller with the uh, grasshopper so this was one moment where the grasshopper was trying to escape from the sharp uh, beak of this uh, bird and it put all its wing in the open i really wish i mean it's a wish i really wish if the um uh, rollers wings were also open like that but unfortunately i didn't get a frame with the complete open wings of the roller but uh, the open wings of um you know uh, the kill which is a grasshopper i forgot the name of the grasshopper but it was slightly bigger for a, uh, this one and it took really a good time for 
this roller to finish it. Uh, so that was again another interesting moment. Keeping your focus on when it whenever it comes to birds, especially if you're thinking about bird in action, try to keep the focus on their eyes and try to keep a higher shutter speed like 2500 plus to get uh, to freeze the action if your intention is to freeze the action try to keep a um, uh, shutter speed above uh, 2500 um, and again in this particular case it was around 11 o'clock it was after our breakfast we were trying to go back to the camp that is when this happened but it definitely gave us some interesting moments moving further uh, Luluka, once again, uh, what you are seeing in the bottom on, on, on this part, I'm not sure whether you are seeing the cursor from my computer, uh, what you are seeing over here on the right hand corner of the tree is a, uh, a tree is a high now. So there was an attack of um, bees so she first ran down and when she saw the uh, hyena in the bottom then she went all the way up so this was a moment between this um, going up and down and i was using a um 7200 mm 2.8 and my aperture was f10 if i remember but something slightly on the higher side and i was keeping the iso again on slightly higher side and um the reason for keeping the aperture slightly on the higher side, I wanted to get the clouds as well as wanted to get the details of the bushy area to show that. And uh, beyond that, I was thinking of getting the full tree into the picture to show where they, how they go, what is the surroundings and what is the story. If I was not using a 7200 mm at 70, I would have missed the, uh, the, uh, Haina part of it. So that was very interesting. When it, the most interesting part was the Haina, then uh, the leopard going up the tree and the sausages. It's called sausage tree. The clouds, de definitely, it was an am amazing um, thing to see it. Uh, uh, so whenever you see a possibility, whenever you see a possibility of a, for a leopard to go up the tree, position your vehicle in a way where you're seeing this landing side of the tree. So usually, in most of the time, they use this landing side to go up as well as down. So positioning, you need to think about um, that, you know, this landing side uh, facing your camera so that you can get the image. Always think about the background. And it, as you can see, there were, it was a really cloudy uh, day and it was beautiful. So I was... All I was thinking is getting the sky, getting the ground, getting the foreground, background, everything uh, in the picture. So it was a beautiful day. And I think uh, you are, the way you see things on your project things definitely helps. 7200 mm was the camera, which I, 7200 mm was the uh, lens I have used over here. So you see, you you can see the foreground over here and you can see the hyena over here. So the hyena was the reason for the leopard to uh, move up. And now uh, this is the image and I uh, think it is a, continu uh, this was a continuation shot of the same one. The hyena is still down and uh, the leopard was uh, going up. Further, because of the bees, she was not able to survive over there. So she jumped on top of the uh, hyena and uh, moved away from the scene. Keeping the shutter speed high is the key. I really need to do that. Um, uh, so once again, here I was using slightly on the higher um, uh, higher aperture to get the details of the background. The and give that depth to the picture. Um, I do see messages from uh, Tan as well as Eli. Thank you so much. Now, moving further, uh, this was another blessed evening with uh, Cheetah. I'm not sure what was her name. We were, in fact, in the area of um, uh, who was there in this particular area? It was uh, Luluka's 
the Lorient scab. We were looking for Lorient scab and we spotted this particular uh, cheetah. And I think this was one of the most uh, beautiful uh, sunset I have seen along with cheetah. So most of the images what you are seeing is this particular time of my last six months or uh, six months which I have spent in the Mara. I was trying to focus mainly on my 7200 mm and specifically to be honest focusing more on 70 rather than 400 mm i'm not saying that i haven't used 400 mm but then i tried purposely using 7200 mm because kind of feel the difference what you see 7200 mm in 70 and um, 200 uh and you see more of habitat, you are able to make more stories rather than portrait. So that's the difference when you are using a wider uh, lens, you know, you are you will be able to add more elements to your picture, you will be able to add more depth to your picture. And that definitely helps. So 7200 mm over here uh, on, on um, if I, I don't remember whether it was a C7, or uh, d5 um, anyway the iso to the 100 or the lowest number which was possible uh, and kelvin on the higher side again 8000 um, 8300 or 400 and uh, <coughs> full, full stops i i think fully underexposed completely underexposed uh, thankfully uh, you know uh, it was it was a beautiful, beautiful morning and a great memory. So the key when you are thinking about uh, taking a silhouette picture, think about seeing the sky through the belly or below the belly. You should be able to get the, the whole legs. If there is any possibility, get the whole legs on the horizon. The subject should be on the horizon. You should be able to you know, see the space between there, you know, between the belly and the ground. You should be able to see the light. The more portion of the legs are above the horizon, then that makes it even more interesting. Otherwise, you will see only the shape of it, the body or the head popping from the ground. It looked like a sculpture. Even this looks like a sculpture, but then the moment it is on top of the horizon, then it adds a little more value to it. Okay. So this was another memory from a beautiful day. Um, one and unforgettable moment was this is Imani. She got four cups um, uh, uh, when we were there. This was one of my very first sighting on the second day of my six months ex expedition and I spent a decent amount of time with Imani and her four cups while I was there. And this is the day when she we have seen how a mother can um uh, how a mother can react when it comes to protecting her cubs you can see cheetahs when you're thinking about a cheetah cheetah is a big cat and um, you know she is strong but she is one of the weakest cat when it comes to uh, if you're comparing leopard cheetah and lions and you can see that over here how small she is but when it comes to protecting her cubs you can see how aggressive the mothers can be Again, once again, another uh, we spent uh, a decent amount of time with this uh, two, uh, this two from around twelve o'clock in the afternoon till five thirty in the evening. We even skipped the lunch during this day, and we got some. Um, it it was it is one day I don't think I'll ever forget because this lioness came back and tried to attack the cubs um, for three or four times in this particular day. We have seen it thrice. Uh, so it was a very, very uh, tough day for the um, for this particular uh, cheetah who is known as Imani. Unfortunately, even though she managed to save the cubs on this particular day, uh, she lost all the cubs now. So it, it is very sad. So that's one thing you need to realize when it comes to cheetah cubs, their mortality rate is extremely high. Only some of them manage to survive. And the saddest part is there are only 6,000 plus cheetahs in the world, in the wild as of now. Whereas 
a hundred years ago, it was more than a hundred or two hundred thousand plus cheetahs in the wild. So that's the kind of reduction what we are facing in this part in this time because of you, hum we humans and our greed. So it's our responsibility to spread awareness as much as possible to reduce further damage and to protect whatever we have as of now. Um, uh, uh, yes, uh, of course, I totally understand. Um, you know, for me, I play a lot of lot with uh, uh, Kelvin, and I try to keep it slightly on the higher side. I like that yellow tint or the golden tint in your picture, especially if it is during uh, evening and morning hours. Even during day times, I usually prefer slightly on the yellow tint in my images rather than the blue. Um, uh, so that's a personal choice because uh, my buddy Hermi always prefer to use something on the lower side and you will be always able to see that blue tin. In fact, we all say that that's Hermi blue <laughs> when it comes to Kelvin. Uh, so this was another interesting story. Uh, so in moments like this doesn't happen always. So it's your uh, definitely your luck. Once again, it was a rainy day. You can see a lot of uh, water drops and you see the aggression and in, in this scene you can see the way she was moving and you can see the all dust and, and all the drama uh, in the image i really wish i knew how to uh, edit in the way some of our photographers are editing adding making it more dramatic unfortunately i'm not great in with that kind of editing i would definitely love to ask um, a couple of my you know, a couple of my photography friends who are extremely good in um, uh, editing would like to share this images with them to see how ki what kind of drama they can do with their kind of editing in this image, uh, if possible. That's one thing I'm really, really thinking about to see a different artistic version of this one. This is like a two minute work when it comes to editing, but um, as somebody who's really good in editing may be able to do some extra work and do some magic with it. Um, what is the secret to, I see a question over here. What is the secret to keeping a photo different without even a repetitive boredom? I mean, see, um, life, in a way, is boring, whether it is uh, wildlife or anything. Uh, the, the plus point of wildlife is, yeah, you do feel um, that you, and the more you understand about the animal behavior, you kind of foresee what is going to happen in most of the time. But there is an unpredictability in that. So that's what is interesting for it. And again, I, I mean, this is my perspective. So that is what is my answer for uh, Sinto. Um, yeah, yeah, we all get up in the morning or if you have a night shift, no, but in general scenario, we get up in the morning, we do our stuff and we kind of do the regular daily steps. The only difference, if even if you're going to be a wildlife photographer, your life is more or less going to be the same. The animals are going to behave in the same way, but there will be slight change here and there. And that's what makes it interesting. And there is a lot of unpredictability. That is what is the challenge. Uh, moving further, uh, yeah, um, again, 7200 mm at 70 on a very beautiful uh, evening. Uh, this particular um, male female tried a couple of uh, hunting attempt, but everything gone in vain. And she was, at the end of the day, she was sitting on top of a mount and the sky was extremely beautiful. And uh, this is what the end result of it. Once again, underexposing it uh, to uh, to full and um, uh, keeping the Kelvin on the higher side, um, uh, ISO on the lower the max, lower. I mean, the least was the key over here. Kelvin definitely on the higher side. Um, yeah, yes, thank you so much. Um, photography is one of the most risky thing in life. I don't think photography is a risky thing. Why should photography be the risky thing, Sinto? Uh, no, it's the most interesting thing. It gives you, uh, it gives, in my case, it definitely helped me to see what this, I was very fickle-minded, I was very jumpy. 
I'm not saying that I have changed completely, but it does. I mean, nature and spending time in nature definitely helped me to calm down myself and uh, help me to reduce my fickle mindness and jumpy nature and short temper. A lot of things in general, I think it had a lot of positive value in my life. Risk is sometimes what people do is they do stupid things like trying to touch a a lion or a leopard is definitely not right or any animal any wild animal petting any wild animal is definitely not nice so that is the time where you ended up in end up in a human animal conflict so try to avoid that as much as possible so this is once again from um, um, which pride this was uh, lookout pride uh, the pride of uh, scarface and marani so this too this this particular if i cried up, up when i know when i knew that one cub is no more that is when this thing happened so because i was so much in love with this particular cub um i got two cubs in the same age and uh, one was slightly on the darker one and this was slightly on the fairer side and um, this was so active it was so active all the time and give some kind of funny emotions funny actions and uh, love everything was so visible on its face so this was from one of such a moment so when i knew and we kind of realized that uh, he's no more or he or she was no more i really hurt yeah that's what i said i am quite an emotional person so i try you know no matter what i try it's quite hard for me to change that back that side of me um, another interesting low light photography. This, so this was um, Lorian with her cub. She was seeing the cub after two days. It was slightly late in the evening. The light was extremely low. So here I was going completely on the uh, manual side, including manual focus, manual settings, f2.8. Uh, on a 400 mm 2.8, what you're seeing as it is, it's the full frame image. And um, I have for editing in this particular case, I, I used Denoise AI, which really helped me to reduce the noise in the picture because I think I was using an extremely high um, uh, uh, ISO, I mean, extremely high in the sense, I think almost around 6,000 or 8,000, something like that was my uh, ISO in this particular picture. And the lighting condition was extremely low. But then thanks to Denoise and thanks to Nikon um, for their low light performance, I managed to get this from. So when the light is low, there are a few things which you need to think about. Of course, if you hold a, a decent camera or something on the higher side, the ISO performance will be definitely better. And even if not, try to use denoise I, I, AI. That is definitely a great gear to get rid of noise. But I know people or photographers who use um, noise as an art element for them. Definitely, it's a different key. It's clear from this photo how much ma'am's passion. Oh, thank you so much, dear. Uh, um, I really appreciate Santo. Uh, Eli, yes, it is a 2.8. Uh, the perfect time to take picture of an animal. There is nothing called perfect time. See, every time is a perfect time. But if you ask me what is my personal choice, I prefer early mornings and late evenings. I usually try to avoid the afternoons because of the harsh shadows. The moment the sun is above us by 12 o'clock, then the shadows it is going to create above, you know, on the eyes, on the body, it's going to be really harsh. So if you're not thinking in an artistic perspective, I usually try to avoid shooting when the light is harsh. I mean, I'm not saying I don't. If the action is nice, then as I do. But in generally, I do try to avoid it. Um, so that is on the uh, perfect time. See, in life, there is nothing perfect, my dear. Everything changes. Everything is a different. Everything is different. The moment you see something as perfect, it is going to be, at some point of time, you will be able to reach that so-called perfect. And uh, then you feel numb. So 
I try to enjoy the journey. I don't keep a benchmark for myself. I am just living myself. I mean, I look for the happiness in the nature. I look for the moments. I it's kind of a meditation or a treatment in my case. Um, so for me, this is not a competition. Of course, this is life. This is a way of living. But this is not a competition for me. I'm not doing a race over here with anybody. I'm not looking for best moments. All I'm trying to do is capture the moments what I'm coming across in a beautiful which, uh, way according to me. Now, the beauty is completely a different concept. It can be something for me. It can be something else for you. So that's one thing which you need to understand. Uh, thank you, Ellie, once again. Yeah, eyes, definitely the moment you have a better grip on the eyes and if you have an eye contact within the image, that always makes it even more interesting. Uh, going further, um, yeah, this is from the same day. So uh, if you are checking this image, you can see there is a small cavity in the tree. And you can see how dark it was. So the, when the mother arrived, she gave a call and the cub was popping its head out of the cavity and coming towards us. Once again, thanks to Dino's AI, it was really a, a bit a darker image and a manual focus. And I really struggled to get the focus right because of the low lighting condition, thanks to the higher end, um, uh, higher end um, equipments I was using, be it D5 or 400 mm, 400 mm 2.8, along with uh, Dino's AI, I, I, I must say that because it was really a, a dark image and getting rid of the uh, uh, noise was really a struggle for me. So. Dino is AI is something which I'll definitely suggest for anybody who is struggling with their uh, AI issues. So when it came closer, uh, this was the next one. Uh, it, it was curious. First, it was a bit shy, but then it became curious and it was looking at us. Now you can, I was using 2.8 and you see the way the depth of field added drama into the picture the leopard and the, the cub as well as some grass in this area on towards the right side because it was exactly in the plane in plane with that is completely in focus you see the shadow of the mother in the back not shadow the body because it's it's completely blurred because of 2.8 and the grass on the left side is also completely blurred because of the 2.8 so the 2.8 can add a lot of drama into your picture the way you use it. And the eye contact definitely adds a lot of value. Uh, ISO performance of your camera definitely helps you. And um, if you're using a D software like uh, Denoise AI to reduce the ISO, that can definitely add a lot of magic into your picture. So these are the things which I would definitely love to see. or love to say. Um, where are you right now? back in um, Canada, Vancouver. Uh, then, then this one, it's the same uh, cub image which I have showed, uh, shared uh, some time ago. It's uh, the cub from um, Lookout Pride. S look for the frames, guys. It's not about showing the complete face. It's not about showing the complete body. It's about how you are talking about a story. So this is a hide and seek for me. It was quite shy in the beginning when we reached the spot. So it was kind of hiding behind the bush, in, in the den, behind the mount. So those are the moments you need to think about and uh, try to see how you can uh, jump into the scene. So this was one thing and um, and very, very close to heart moment for me. It's a full frame image. I was using an Nikon D5 along with a 400mm 2.8. And this fellow was right behind the bush and popping his head out. And um, uh, the rest of the things were uh, blur. Uh, 2.8 magic, I must say. Uh, going further. Uh, same fellow, when he got a little more confidence, uh, he kind of uh, comes slightly in the friend and he was sitting there and looking straight into our eyes and this was a um, frozen moment from the cup's life. Uh, now, moving further, 
um uh, again uh, another interesting moment with uh, uh, lorian scab uh, we we were the first people to see this particular leopard and her cub and the mother was extremely smart uh, she put the cub in a place where people can hardly see it and if at all somebody is able to see only one car could stay or only one vehicle could stay in that place because there was no other option for any other people and so your patience definitely had a lot of thing in it because uh you you may have to stand next to this particular tree for hours and hours for nothing until unless the uh, leopard decided to come over here so we were uh, with uh, lorian for a while on this particular day then when she reached and uh, she dropped the cub into this cap okay, she cub she inspect herself uh, with the cavity of this particular tree she pushed the cub into or she lean the cub into the cavity then she moved away once she moved away the cub was kind of popping its eye through the cavity and looking at us and looking at the mother so it was an amazingly interesting moment and i will i you know so certain moments certain moments are something i i always had this dream of um, getting uh, the cubs like be it a leopard lion or a cheetah popping their head through their habitat was always a dream of mine especially through the den or at through the cavity so i've managed to get one lion cub and then a leopard cub now couple of times now i'm still waiting for the cheetah moment from the den i don't know when it is going to happen but it is a dream so i hope sometime so whenever you see things like this you always need to make sure you need to go on vertical as well as horizontal so that's what i have done over here gone vertical as well as horizontal so the tree and everything together for me it was an amazing moment uh thank you so much tan and um shy yet uh, curious yelly i totally agree if you are talking about the lion cub yes it was an interesting uh, moment uh, tan thank you so much uh, the most difficult animal face to the photo every animal is an experience it's um, it it's it's amazing for me i think the darker the subject it's always uh, tougher that's what is my feel uh, the black subject to get the detail it's always uh, a tough task for me um yeah the idea is to overexpose or exposure is the key slightly on the higher side and uh, then a little bit of editing which whereas where i lag quite often but dark subjects are something which always give me a slightly tougher time uh now yeah this was the thing which i would again like to say is go horizontal go vertical try different lenses whenever you see things like this uh, that will help you to create different frames from the same type um yes the same time again once uh, the mother moved away this cub again uh, came through the bushy area and he was looking at us so you see the different colors in the foreground it's dry leaves or young leaves uh, or dead leaves which is giving that color variation in the foreground so add more foreground elements show the habitat leopards live in the bush so show them in the bush i think add more value to your story uh look for that perfect moment at least look for that moment which you are getting with the eye contact that will definitely help to create that connection between you and the subject uh this is from the very first days uh, where we spotted it was again a, a late uh, a early morning and uh, we spotted her we give her time she was extremely shy at this point of time and we were seeing her through that gap small gap where we got it so again a dark a uh, bit cloudy day early morning with a lorian scab um i uh, see it's not just the cats so every animal when it comes to the young ones the interaction do give a lot of happiness in this particular case my key was the frame to begin with it was a very beautiful golden evening so the golden color definitely add a lot of value then beyond that what i like is the eye the white part of the elephant eye is not that often seen 
So that was another key over here. And the expression in the elephant, the baby elephant was quite funny. It looks like a smiling for me with the eyes as well as with the mouth. So look for the story behind it and uh, that always help you to see things in a different perspective. Um, so how many pictures did you shoot in the six months on this project? Um, I think um, maybe around four TB of content, uh, maybe four. Uh, yeah, around four to five TB of images are there. Honestly, maybe 100,000 images will be there. And um, um, if you're in the total I'm talking about and a bunch of videos. And if you ask me if I have gone through all the images, no, just because of this uh, 365 uh, days project, which I have done, I have did a little bit of highlights, but I haven't uh, started editing not even 100 images, maybe I'm, I still have to go through the images to short do short listing and um, do a bit of editing uh, but then yes maybe around 100,000 images there and if you are I will be really lucky if I have some uh, 100 good images not good I mean 100 stories from that which can you know uh, which will be interesting I think I do have a bunch of good moments in this case but it's a lot of work to go through that and uh, get it sorted um, yeah, it is. It is, and especially as I mentioned, I don't, I don't have a software which can give, um, which can work like preview to check my C7 images or C6 images. So I still haven't gone even one percentage of what I have done. That is a struggle. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, another interesting moment with um, uh, a lion. I'm sorry, I'm, I have a different image where the lion as well as the lioness is in focus. In this particular case, the lion is in focus, but not the lioness as I was using f2.8 and the focus was on the face of the lion. So the lion, I managed to get it in properly focused, but the uh, lioness was not in focus. Uh, so that is that was one thing. Uh, give me one. Sorry, it was an urgent call. That's the reason I had to take it. Um, but it was this was an interesting, uh, interesting scenario. Um, how many pictures did you shoot in six months that I have already answered? Which is the most? Um, uh, what? Which is the most? The most time consuming process in photography, my God, for me, it is going through the images and deleting the images. I said five TV images I have. I think I need to delete four and a half TV or beyond that if you are if I'm really going to be strict on myself and going to shortlist. That is the toughest thing when it comes to photography. Um, uh, lucky sightings and beautiful photos as well. Thank you so much, Hirani. I really appreciate your kind words. Yes, see, the more time you're going to spend in the field, you will end up in seeing a lot. That's the key in photography. Now, in this case, I was seeing uh, the element. We This was in April, uh, I think around um, 16th of April or sometime around that time. It was a topic and, uh, you know, I because I do workshops, there I see a lot of people I teach a lot of people and this particular um, uh, guest of us, usually people ask for lions, leopard and cheetah, but he was all about sunrise and sunset and beautiful moments, not at all um, demanding when it comes to uh, cats or any specific thing. All he wanted was the light. The magical light was his key and he got some amazing moments. And this was one moment with him. Once again, I was using a 400mm 2.8 over here. I put it on F22 and um, the Kelvin was on 
8,300 or 8,600. I underexposed it completely. I mean, five stop underexposed. And the ISO was L1. So because the sun is really above the horizon, so it's going to be harsh when you are looking through the camera. So I put it completely underexposed and uh, got some amazing series of images uh, with this topi. So the moment you are on uh, in the field uh, with any subject uh, on the horizon with the sunset, if the sun is completely out of the, or it's getting up, whether it is going down or coming up, you need to make sure that your ISO is on the lower side and um, um, aperture is on the higher side to reduce the light and uh, increase the Kelvin so that you add more color to the image and underexpose it to get the shape. Uh, that was it. And then uh, what else is there? Do I have some more images? Uh, yeah, again, uh, action sequence with um, uh, Lulukas Cub. Uh, so I have seen him swinging like this for a couple of times. So the, the toughest part in these kind of sequence is getting the focus because of the foreground elements and in the bushy area, they will. he was swinging. So getting the focus right on the face was really difficult because of the foreground elements. So... Uh, keep your focus rightly uh, on the subject uh, can be tricky, but your attention is the biggest thing. So this is one shot uh, which happened on the same day when she made the kill and she was she went and um, uh, met this cub and uh, there was an interaction between them, maybe around 80 to 90 photos from the same series where the cub was jumping on top of the mother, jumping around the mother, jump, uh, giving a hug, standing on two legs. Uh, it was amazing, amazing sequence which we witnessed. Uh, I was using a 400 mm 2.8 over here. Um, whenever you see any subject around the water body, try to see if there is any possibility to get the reflection properly. And I was using F8 over here, 400 mm 2.8 along with the uh, D5. So that was the gears which I was using in this case. Um, what should be the basic kit we can plan for wildlife photography? My suggestion will be go for something which can give you a 400 mm range. So if you're thinking about Nikon, maybe if you can go with a 80-400, uh, that is great. If you cannot afford that, then you can think about a 200-500 mm. That is good. If it is Canon, then you can think about 100-400. If it is Sony, you can think about 200-600 uh, when it comes to gears. That will definitely help you. If you cannot afford uh, when it comes to any of these gears, you can always go for a third party like Sigma or uh, Tamron or anything like that. That will help you. And when it comes to camera bodies, think about anything which can give you a good ISO performance and a good uh, FPS, frame per second and ISO performance because light and action is a key when it comes to wildlife photography. And it depends on your budget. So look what is your budget and then go for which camera and uh, what is better for you, Tan. Um, uh, Ma'am uh, has to say, young people who's passionate about photography, uh, spend more time there. Spend more time in the field and understand animal behavior, understand your gear. Uh, the moment you start to understand animal behavior, life become more easy because you can predict to some extent that is the key over here. Daily practice is the best thing about it. Uh, now uh, let's uh, uh, let's keep this as the last frame over here. Um, it was an amazing, amazing day, I must say. I, in fact, I was not even going for photography in this particular day. I was going with uh, the camp, you know, uh, uh, journey to get some grocery things to. <laughs> Uh, to the camp and on our way back I always whenever you are going out always keep your camera with you so that's the same thing I did I kept the camera with me and um, uh, when it was the time to uh, when we were coming back we heard uh, in the radio that there is a possibility for you to see uh, Luluka 
along with her along with her cub and um uh, uh, they said she made a vartho kill and she is going she went to get the cub so when we were coming back we tried to focus on her so i was using a 400 mm 2.8 in this particular case at 400 mm 2.8 and i we, we there were a lot of vehicles so everybody was kind of taking their turn to get the moment so in this case we, we myself our vehicle and another vehicle was there uh, so i was using a 400 mm and i was keeping the focus on the whiskers of the mother while i started to shoot and i saw the young one coming uh, from the back side and then um, i saw it like um, uh, i i knew that there is going to be some kind of action i was keeping the iso slightly on the higher side as you can see it was a late evening and um, and then she went and jumped on top of the uh, 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 leopard and the mother but i've never seen something like this on the sideways yes but looking towards you was an amazing experience 10 images from this sequence this was the third of it so that was an amazing moment for me once again the iso performance the shutter speed these two are definitely two important uh, things and then you you are luck or the mother nature's blessings definitely add a lot more value um uh, i'm not saying that uh, this is uh, this is all what i got in um, uh, my 6 months journey there is a lot more images but honestly uh, with my schools and the work i really didn't get much time to go through the images or videos and process it um, so let's see i'm i'm really trying my best to get some some more images uh, and trying to work on it thank you eli thank you so much tan uh, do you do you think c6 is good uh, definitely c6 mark 2 is definitely a great image in fact i have suggested this to a student of mine over here she got a c6 mark 2 along with a 80 400 mm and she is extremely happy with it this cub is restless um, oh yes both the cubs be it luluka or lorian in fact um, the the image which i have shared some time ago of lorian there is a connection between lorian and luluka so luluka is lorian's daughter and now the mad uh, luluka as well as uh, lorian got two cubs and i think was i think both of them are male which is sad if it was male female then it would have been in that particular area itself so they are going to move away in a while yeah this lorian cub as well as luluka cub both are extremely playful so the moment you are spending with them you will be able to see some amazing you know amazing um moments he will return to take pictures uh, in the forest of in the in the forest of kerala uh, i'm 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 sorry i have no idea what you are asking whether you are, if you are asking me whether i'll be back in kerala to take pictures i i was a part of a project in kerala a couple of years ago um, so i that gave me an opportunity to see a bit of kerala forest so it's beautiful it's a different experience even more tougher to be honest because in kerala photography is not in a safari vehicle it is going to be by foot you need to walk you need to trek so there is a lot of risk and uh, forget about uh, trekking and walking but getting the permission if it is not for a project to go into the core forest is extremely difficult you either need to be working on some project or you need to be really have some good connection that is the only way to see the real core forest of kerala um so until unless i get some time and a project i don't think it is going to happen but it is an amazing place thank you for sharing um uh, thank you thank you so thank you so much tan for your um, kind words i really appreciate it um so that is it i i was thinking about uh, 30 minutes and now it is almost one and half hour i know it was a very long talk um, honestly as i mentioned you know you have 5 5 gb of almost 4 to 5 gb of images i still haven't got even 10 percentage of it so i really def- but i did definitely share some highlights because highlights we always keep it in a different folder 
that help us to go through it uh, but i still i think i do i still do have some more images to share in some other occasion but thank you so much for um, uh, being here and i'm extremely sorry that facebook didn't work i'm not sure what was the issue uh, so sorry for that uh, and um, we are still in the pandemic situation we are still in the covid situation so please make sure you guys are getting your vaccination i got mine the first dose as well as the second dose i'm not saying that it is going to protect me completely from covid but at least it is to some extent um, so please make sure you guys are getting your vaccination uh, that will help you to save yourself as well as your loved ones um akash Raj, uh, ranjan uh, hi ma'am i'm a big fan of your photography mm, i just love your love live session it's very informative about wildlife thank you akash uh, i'm really i'm really happy to know that it was informative so thank you so much i really appreciate your feedbacks and thank you so much for your love um so i think i kind of um, in between answered most of the questions and um, everything so um, uh, hello uh, hello and thank you to all of you and in case if i missed any of the questions i'm sorry you can always inbox me in my instagram or facebook or in youtube i so i can uh, you know um, answer it uh, once again um when it comes to wildlife photography, the key is your patience and understanding um, animal behavior. It is not an overnight thing, so you really need to spend, you really need to be ready to spend some good time in the field to understand animal behavior. So that's the only key. Um, so good luck with that. And uh, thanks a lot, Ellie and Sinto and uh, Tan and everyone over here uh, for giving me this time. And I'll uh, let's see what we can do together. Use your images, use your ideas, use your thoughts to spread love and uh, spread a connection or bring more people closer to nature. That's the idea behind postures, behind me as a photographer or as a person. So anything you can do to protect our mother nature, let's do this together. On that note, I'm going to say bye. Let's catch up soon with another beautiful session from Postrays. I'm not, uh, Hermie is talking to a couple of wonderful photographers from across the world. So let's see who is going to be the next one. I really don't know who is the next one, but I'm sure it is going to be interesting than this one. So let's catch up soon. Till then, take care, stay safe with lots and lots of love from Vancouver. Bye bye. <laughs>